Hello, this is Dampro. Welcome back to my vehicle rigging tutorial series. In part one, we went and did all of our mesh preparation for rigging, and now we're ready to add our armature and start parenting those mesh objects to the armature and bones within the armature. So we'll do Shift S, cursor to center, to make sure our cursor is at the center of the scene. Shift A, we can add our armature, single bone. So the reason we put our cursor there is so our armature would be added at the center of our scene there. And we can see that armature with the single bone in it but it's being hidden a little bit so we can go to our armature data tab turn on x-ray I'm also going to turn on axis display that will be helpful when we are in edit mode and pose mode a little bit later one other thing that can be helpful for visualizing everything is to go to our object data tab which is a cube icon and then change our maximum draw type for our armature from textured to wire. I like the combination of wire and x-ray so we can see through their bones and also see um, our, where our bones are in relationship to the mesh. So there are actually three different modes for an uh, armature. There's object mode, edit mode, and pose mode. We are currently in object mode and basically this mode, this is going to be the last time we're in this mode ever. Um, basically you never need to manipulate your uh, armature object in this mode uh, from here on out, especially if you have a good working root bone and our rig will have that. So the other two modes are going to be edit mode and when you're in edit mode, this is where we're going to add new bones to our, our um, armature. It's where we're going to parent bones to each other. And it's also where we're going to set up their default locations and orientations. And by orientations, I mean the axes of these bones. So the other mode will be pose mode. In pose mode, that is where we're going to add our object constraints or uh, bone constraints rather and they are different than object constraints. So on this chain icon, you can actually see that I'm getting a um, error right here go to the bone constraints because I have this bone selected so object constraints are different than bone constraints this is where we'll be adding those and the other thing we'll be doing is parenting our meshes to bones within that armature in pose mode so I'm going to be tabbing back and forth between edit mode and pose mode quite often so I want to give you a visual indicator in case I forget to tell you um, which mode I'm in or if I just say the wrong mode um, when I'm in edit mode these bones will be orange and when I'm in pose mode they will be blue so it's a good visual indicator so you can follow along because like I mentioned I'll be tabbing back and forth quite often so now we have a single bone in our armature and it is called bone so let's rename this to root now our root bone currently is not um, uh, aligned very well for an animator so here's the key um, animators are always animating in local space so if I select this bone in pose mode and do GZ and I drag it up on the world Z axis, the transforms that are being manipulated are the Y transforms of that bone. And the reason for that is the Y axis of that bone is currently pointing up. If I do GZZ, I'm going to manipulate the local Z transforms of that, but it's actually moving that bone along the Y axis of the world. So here's another key when you clear everything out here. Um, whenever you have a location controller, whenever it's possible, um, it's always best to align the axes of your bone with the axes of the world. So we can do this in edit mode. I'm going to go to edit mode, select my root bone. I want to select the tail end of it. Now there are two vertices that make up each bone. There's going to be the head and that is always on this fat end of the octahedral mode and the thin end will be the tail. So with the tail selected, R, X, negative 90. I'm going to lay this bone down flat. And now you can see that the axes of the bone are aligned with the axes of the world. The Y axis is going with this green axis, X is right to left on the red axis, and Z, of course, is up and down. Now, another thing about the axis display here, I, cur I think that this um, display option is actually backwards. Now, uh, it's displaying the axes on the tail end of the bone, but the important end of the bone is always the head. So if we go to pose mode and I rotate this bone around, it's going to rotate from this end, not this end over here. So uh, if you actually have your manipulators on, it will display them at the correct end of the bone. So just keep this in mind. Um, this can be a little bit confusing, I think, um, because these axes are actually over here. Um, so again, uh, a little bit of an oddity for Blender. But now when we have uh, our bone, our root bone aligned better, I can do GZ, and not only am I moving it up and down on the global Z axis, I'm also affecting the local transforms of that bone. So again, the rule of thumb is um, animators animate the local transforms of, of the bones, 
and whenever you have a location controller it's always best to align the axes of your bone with the axes of the world now um, let's get back to axes a little bit here because it's kind of an important subject there are two ends to a bone uh, the head and the tail the um, y-axis is always going to be between the head and the tail so um, you can also rotate your bone with control R to affect the roll of that bone and you can point the Z and X axis any way, way that you uh, need to so that was how you would change the X and the Z axes and of course the Y axis is always going to be determined by where the points the head and tail are alright so now we have a root bone it's been aligned properly let's go back to edit mode I'm going to select the root shift D GZ I'm going to drag up a new bone so this bone is about even with the um, where the floor pan is going to be. I'm going to use S to scale this just to resize this a little bit. I'm going to name this bone body. This will be our body controller. And with the body selected, shift D once more and GY. I'm going to drag a new bone so the head of it is um, right about the center of our wheel. And I want it on the vertical axis, not so much um, the horizontal axis. And this is going to be a, another control, and we're going to name this Drift. I want to set up some very basic um, parenting here. And the way you do that is uh, I want to parent my body to my Drift and my Drift to the root bone. So you always select the child first, shift select the parent. So in this case, it's body bone to the Drift, control P, keep offset. And I want to parent the Drift bone to the root bone, control P. I'm going to use the keep offset um, now, um, when you're in edit mode, you can see the relationship lines of that parenting, but you can't see the results of that parenting. You need to be in pose mode for that. Now, when I select that root bone, the two children are going to move with it. So, uh, one other thing I want to do is I want to parent my Blend Rover body mesh to the body bone. So, I'm going to select the mesh, shift select the bone. You need to be in pose mode for this. Control P. I'm going to set parent to bone. And now when I move this body bone, the uh, body mesh is going to move with it. Uh, one thing I want you to um, keep in mind here is when you parent a mesh to a bone, um, the object origin of the mesh is no longer relevant. So if I were to rotate the mesh itself, the uh, object origin is currently at the center of the scene here. It's going to rotate around that point. But because I've parented it to our uh, bone, when I rotate the bone, it's going to rotate that mesh around it's um, the head position here. Again, the head is always the the um, the important end here. So just keep that in mind. Um, one other thing, when you're parenting mesh objects to a bone, when you do it directly like this, um, if you were to change the position of the edit uh, in edit mode of that bone, or even if you just resize it a little bit, um, you're going to affect that mesh. So you're going to see it shift when I go back to pose mode. Now this is something you shouldn't panic on. Now the reason I've applied all the locations or applied all the transforms is so we can quickly um, fix this and you can do it by um, just unparenting that mesh with Alt P, clear parent, that mesh will go back to its default state and then you can just reparent that mesh to that bone again. Control P, set parent to bone and no problem. So that's one advantage of applying the transforms to the mesh objects. All right, so let's set up and talk about our parent-child relationships and what everything is going to be doing here. Now, our root bone is going to be our main location and rotation and also the scale controller for our rig. So uh, eventually, I will add a uh, follow path constraint um, so we can turn that follow path constraint on or off and have it follow a path uh, through our scene. And we'll also be able to hand animate this uh, wherever we want we can rotate it obviously go up and down hills and things of that nature now as we're traveling along our path here we will often want to move our body bone to animate some up and down action so um, we really only need to have our body move up and down relative to our ground here because obviously as we hit uh, different bumps we'll be able we'll want to um, animate that uh, that bounce a little bit so uh, for this, we only really need to um, change the location on its Z-axis only. So 
uh, the x-axis for location and the y-axis for location aren't actually going to be uh, very useful. They're actually going to be redundant from what our root bone is going to be doing. But we are going to need to be able to change its location so we can get closer or further away from the ground as we hit uh, small or large bumps. Now for rotation, on the X rotation, this is actually going to be very useful. So uh, when you take off, you're going to roll the body back a little bit. If you slam on the brakes, you're going to roll forward. So the X rotation is a good axis of rotation for this bone. The uh, Y rotation is also going to be a good rotation for this bone because we're going to want some side-to-side -side movement. Of course, if you hit a uh, if you hit a bump on the left side or the right side, you're going to uh, move it a little bit in, in that way. Um, but the Z rotation is actually not very useful. So if we wanted to drift our um, car back and forth, this isn't a good rotation point for that. And that is where a drift bone comes in. So if we're actually going to rotate this along the z-axis, you'd have to move it uh, its location as well to keep um, the front of this in line. So that is where a drift comes in. If I rotate the drift bone along its z-axis or around its z-axis, that will allow us, because our body is a child of it, to drift the back end back and forth. So that is uh, the basic setup here. So again, I like to set up my transform locks here so our animator knows how to use it. For our root bone, we're going to leave everything open because it is, as I mentioned, the main location, rotation, and scale controller for our rig. For our body bone, we only need to um, go up and down on a single axis. That is a Z axis. So we can lock Y in, or X and Y. We only need to rotate it on two axes. Now here's a little bit of a curveball. Um, for rotations, rotations can actually be kind of um, difficult to understand. So here is a general rule of thumb. Whenever you have a bone and you need to rotate on all three axes, you should always leave your rotation mode as quaternions. And that is going to be the standard mode. Uh, every bone is going to be set as a quaternion at, for quaternion rotations when you add new bones to your armature. But um, if your bone only needs to rotate on one or two axes, it's always far easier for an animator um, if you change it from quaternion to Euler. So that is the general rule of thumb. Three axes of, of rotation, uh, leave it as quaternions, and one or two axes, change it to Euler. Now, I'm not going to actually go through all of the theory and stuff behind this. There's a very good tutorial that's available. Uh, it was made by Nathan Vegdahl. It's called Humane Rigging, and you can actually get this tutorial from the Bunder store, and you can also see some of the parts on uh, YouTube if you want to search for it. Um, and, and that tutorial has a very good chapter on all the different rotation modes. So axis rotations, Euler rotations, and quaternions. I highly recommend that you go there and get all the inside information. But for now, you can use uh, my general rules of three axes for quaternions and one or two axes, change it to Euler. So now that we've changed this to Euler, I can just lock the Z axis. And now we'll only be able to rotate on X and Y and no Z. Uh, also, this bone is not going to be needed for scaling, so it's going to just be redundant from our root bone here that is allowed for scaling. Next up is our drift control. We're not going to be using our drift control for um, location, so we can lock all three axes of location. We do not need it for scale as well. Don't need the did I have the right one here selected? And we only need it for um, one axis of rotation, so again, X, change this to Euler and we can lock X and Y. So this only rotates around its Z axis here. And with some simple parent-child relationships here, uh, we have our main functionality for uh, the main um, body here. And we can start setting up all the other stuff. So we have our main location rotation controller. We can drift our body back and forth on that uh, local Z axis for this bone. And we can also animate the up and down, the local uh, X axis for uh, forward and back rotations and the local Z axis for um, side to side rotations. So up next we will add um, the functionality for um, the uh, wheels. We start adding all that now that we have our central body set up. And until then, good luck.